So we get our first official reveal of something from the Rise of Skywalker since the trailer that was released back in April at Celebration. And it's of the Sith Trooper. And we got this reveal from a Hot Toys, which first seemed like perhaps a mistake, then maybe something super special. But then we got the Black Series and the Pop and the Lego set and the pin, and of course, the children's mask. And then shout out to Yak Vase, who caught this, I believe. We got a vintage collection that was advertised as Black Series, but isn't. So they have all their bases covered for the upcoming new trooper. Now this raises a number of questions, but we'll get to those in a minute. First and foremost, I want to talk about the design. Now we'll use the Hot Toys as the major base since they're fairly accurate when it comes to this kind of stuff, but there was also a properly sized trooper on display at SDCC. So we can look at that as well. One of the first things that I noticed was the rivets in the armor. They're throughout, and it reminds me of some of the rivets that we saw in the Praetorian Guard armor. Obviously nowhere near the same level of rivets. Praetorians were pretty sleek, but that's what stuck out most in my memory upon seeing it. It's also a sharp contrast in different colors between the white and black, which is what we're used to, and now the red and black. But looking at the trooper itself, one thing I noticed is that the eyes and the edges of the smile connect, as they have done in recent First Order Trooper styles. I've also noticed that the eyes and the mouth in the center connect, which is very reminiscent of the prequel era clone trooper. This would directly tie into, I feel like, all of the statements that's been made in regards to this film, how they intend to tie everything together. It's a small detail, but it's something that's not lost on me. I also noticed that there's a lot more kind of techie details to this trooper in comparison to the First Order trooper. If you're looking at them side by side, there's just a ton more line work, where the First Order troopers were very sleek, minimal line work. These new troopers stylistically remind me a lot more of the Stormtroopers from the original trilogy than they do that of the First Order troopers or the clone troopers. But I think it looks cool and I think it looks menacing. Now we also got to take a look at a number of accessories via the Black Series option. And I'm not sure what all these are going to be used for. We have a blade that once again is very similar to the weapons used by the Praetorian Guard, at least in my opinion. And then we got all sorts of contraptions that I don't even know what they do. And then of course, kind of a signature blaster and the sort of long range heavy gunner weaponry that we've seen in the sequel era as well. And it should also be noted that this isn't the first time that we've seen these. These popped up in a leaked poster that many, I think, mistakenly took as a film poster, but most now believe will be some sort of merchandising promotion or cardboard cutout type thing that you'd see at an end cap. It was one of the first leaks that we really got, at least visually. And if you look, you'll notice towards the bottom is an army of Sith troopers, but it's a significant amount. Now that doesn't necessarily mean there will be this many in the film, but it certainly suggests there will be. But let's move on. So I think it looks cool. I think it looks sleek. We should expect new troopers in every film. We've gotten new troopers in every film with the exception of The Phantom Menace that had no troopers whatsoever. So this shouldn't come to us as any surprise, but it is interesting in the fact that it's a big leap in terms of color palette, but a relatively small leap in terms of actual design. Whereas the Stormtrooper to Biker Scout is a much bigger leap and then the original Clone Trooper to the Clone Troopers that we see in Episode 3 are a much larger leap as well. Now let's get into some of these questions. And let's start with the name. It's very specific. And they have to know the meaning and the weight that the word Sith carries within this universe. So it raises a number of questions. And I'll start with this one. My gut reaction to this was that these would somehow be tied to Palpatine. Since we know that he's involved in this movie in some way, shape, or form due to the trailer. And since he's the only Sith Lord that we know of that's been in these films, it's the obvious connection. Now, the thing with that is, that would suggest that these were his troopers. Except the design is so similar to the First Order trooper that then it led me down this road of, well then, is there some sort of connection to Palpatine and Snoke and Hux and Kylo since the First Order seemingly answers to those three? That connects the design to those three and then the name to Palpatine and then for me made me draw a parallel between the two. And if we can tie this to Palpatine, what are then the implications for what Palpatine is, what form is he in, how is he able to be around after his fall down into the Death Star, and what connection could that possibly have to Snoke? These are all questions that could possibly play into this theory or to these clues. But then I remembered that they had been spoken about on Making Star Wars and some of the rumors circulating about them is that they answered directly to Kylo Ren. So that removes Palpatine from that set of circumstances and then begs a bigger question of why would Ren have a set of kind of special forces troopers and call them Sith troopers when not only is he not a Sith, but he was just quoted as it's time to let old things die. 
Jedi, the Jedi, the Sith, all of it. If that's the case, why have an army of troopers, or at least kind of a special forces unit, with that name in the title? So that leads me to two different directions. One of which being, maybe in the beginning, his philosophy was to kind of head that route, thus using that name as a badge of honor, or perhaps even a goal. The other option is that something has drastically changed in this dude's life between the year that rests between The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker. And honestly, I hope that none of those things are true. I don't think that it is interesting in any real capacity to see Kylo strive towards the goal of being a Sith Lord. And in just one week, it would undo my theory from last week, wouldn't it? So I sincerely hope that's not the case. But that's the only real clue that we have so far. But let's move on. So although these Sith Troopers are new, the term Sith Troopers is far from new. In fact, it first appeared in 2003's Knights of the Old Republic, where they basically served as standard bad guy fodder for your hero player. In the game itself, they were the standard infantry of the Sith Lords. See, for over 3,000 years before the original trilogy, the Sith Troopers served as infantry for the Sith Empire in the time of Darth Malak. They were mainly traitorous members of the Republic infantry or members from the populace of Sith-controlled systems. They wore armor that was designed to not only hide their physical appearance, but also blend in with one another so their numbers would be perceived as hopefully more, I guess you could say potentially more, but at the very least, mask the exact amount. So 200 could look like 500 within the blink of an eye. The Sith Lords treated them much like Sith Lords treat everyone, with, li with little to no courtesy, you might say, and ruled them with fear and malice. But many of these troopers joined because they saw an opportunity for personal power. And just like anything else, a lot of this stuff is relative and good and bad is relative. You might say it depends on a certain point of view, and many genuinely believe the Sith would be better rulers of the galaxy. Now, these Sith troopers, it's important to note, had no force sensitivity. Now, now in 2011, we saw the launch of the Old Republic, which introduced a new type of Sith Trooper, which takes place canonically 300 years later under the reconstituted Sith Empire and consisted of conscripted members of said empire. They pretty much served the same purpose and again were not force sensitive. And you'll see Sith Troopers appear throughout the Old Republic time frame with little change other than armor platings, markings, or other small nuances. And the last time we hear about them were in in the Dark Horse Legacy comics, which are a hundred years after Return of the Jedi, where they served under the Sith Lord Darth Krait. Now, these Sith Troopers were strong in the Force. They were abducted, modified with cybernetics, and trained from birth. They were completely and utterly loyal to Darth Krait alone. One even committed suicide without the slightest hesitation under the order of Darth Krait. Much like the Sith Troopers of previous, they were infantry, but also served as somewhat of bodyguards to Darth Krait, because we know how treacherous a Sith can be. But the recent red and black Sith troopers are the first ones of this new revised canon. So why even bring up the previous ones? It's for a very specific purpose. With episode 9 marking the end of the Skywalker saga and Star Wars having to find new footing in a different place and perhaps time within this universe, many have suspected and even Lucasfilm has hinted at the possibility of Old Republic stories being worked on and conceptualized and possibly even been finalized. With that being said, I think it's perfectly feasible to suggest that maybe they're introducing the idea of a Sith Trooper now to tie it in to a future story that might take place in the past. This would expound upon the idea of legacy within Star Wars and give a point of reference for some sort of common ground and footing, some sense of familiarity for a new story that they plan on telling, at least seemingly so. So I think that ultimately these Sith Troopers could be as intricate to the story as our first two questions, but possibly just to lay down a breadcrumb trail for us to follow at a later point in time. At the end of the day, this represents something else that's drawn upon from the EU and brought into the new canon. And I love to see stuff like this because my favorite stuff of the EU is mostly character driven. It's not necessarily the stories they tell within that canon. So to capitalize on the cooler concepts, ideas, characters, factions, etc. that exist within the EU or what's now called Legends and then bring them over into the modern canon with slight twists, variations, and more engaging stories I think is a win-win for all. But at the very least, Sith Troopers are now part of this universe officially. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care. Take care.